Hello friends, welcome back to Food Prints. I'm so very glad you're here with me because the big idea we're exploring today is all things in an ecosystem depend on each other. So right now, you're probably thinking, what is an ecosystem? Good question. An ecosystem is a community of living things and non-living things interacting with each other and their environment. A good example is life on the Arctic tundra. And by the way, tundra is a term that means frozen soil. So on the Arctic tundra, a polar bear depends on living things like seals and fish to survive, and it interacts with non-living things like rocks and ice. Together, the polar bears, seals, fish, ice, and rocks, along with the cold temperatures and windy environment around them, are all part of the same ecosystem. So now that you know what an ecosystem is, it's time to get started on today's lesson, which is the garden ecosystem. We're going to observe the living and non-living things in a garden ecosystem and investigate how they interact and depend on each other. And we're going to start by checking out some items that I've collected from the garden ecosystem. I have a flower, some sticks, I have some rainwater, and a kale plant, and I have a rock, and some leaves. And we want to sort these items into one of three categories, things that are living, things that were once living but aren't anymore, and non-living things. Let's start with this rock. Is a rock living or non-living? Was a rock ever alive? No, a rock is not a living thing. Correct. A rock was never alive. It is non-living. So let's put it over here and call this our non-living category. Next up, I have some sticks. Hmm, living or non-living, what do you think? Sticks used to be alive when they were connected to trees. Very good. When sticks are on trees, they're alive, but once they fall to the ground, they die. So we'll put these sticks here and call this our once living category. Now, I'm holding a flower pot with a flower growing in it. What do you think? If a flower is still connected to the soil, then it's alive. You're right, this flower is alive. So let's put it here and call this our living category. Okay, here I have a jar of rainwater. This is a tricky one. Living, once living, or non-living? Rainwater is not alive. Exactly. Rainwater is not alive, so we'll put it here in our non-living category. But remember, rainwater helps keep our plants alive in the garden. So even though it is non-living, it is so important to our garden. And speaking of plants, next up is this kale plant. Is a kale plant living or non-living? Kale is alive. Correct again. This kale plant is living because it's still growing in soil. Someday soon, it'll give us delicious kale leaves to eat. So let's sort it into the living category. Okay, our last item is this pile of leaves. In which category do they belong? Leaves used to be alive when they were on a tree. Great answer. Leaves are alive when they're on a tree, but then they die and fall and their nutrients go back into the soil. So, because they used to be alive, these leaves go into our once living category. Great work sorting our items into our three categories, living, once living, and non-living. Now, another important element of our garden ecosystem I want to mention is soil. And instead of living or non-living, I think a better way to think about soil is whether it's not healthy or healthy. For example, let's take a look at this soil. It's pale in color, it's completely dry, and we can't see any living organisms. So this soil isn't healthy because nothing will grow in this soil. Now, take a look at this soil. It's got a dark, rich color. It's very moist. It has rocks and bits of leaves and even worms in it. So this soil is very healthy, which means plants can grow big and strong in this soil. Now, in our garden ecosystem, all of these items we've discussed have a role to play. 
For example, flowers, they need rainwater to grow. So there's a dependence there. Rocks, decomposing leaves, and sticks. These are all important components of healthy soil. And healthy soil allows our kale plant to grow. So again, they all work together. Are you starting to see how our garden ecosystem works? How living things and non-living things all have a relationship with one another? Everything working together in this ecosystem is how our garden survives. Okay, one last ecosystem term that I want to discuss is interdependence. Interdependence is when two or more things depend on each other for survival. And my favorite example of interdependence in our garden is the relationship between healthy soil and worms. Healthy soil and worms both depend on each other to survive. How do they do that? Well, the worms depend on the healthy soil to provide a safe habitat in which to live but the healthy soil also depends on the worms. That's because worms eat the bacteria, the microorganisms, and the bits of organic material in the soil. And inside their worm bodies, that food changes into nutrients. Then they poop the nutrients back out into the soil. Those nutrients then get pulled up through the roots and help the plants and flowers grow. And that's called a win-win-win. A win for the soil, a win for the worms, and a win for our garden ecosystem. Because healthy soil and happy worms mean happy plants and flowers. But remember, the successful interdependence of things like worms and soil and rainwater and plants depends on you and me to take care of our environment. Only in a healthy, balanced environment can our many ecosystems survive. So take a few minutes today to think about how you can take care of your environment and the ecosystems outside your home. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning about interdependence and ecosystems. See you next time.